Is that what I think it is? It is exactly what you think it is. It is a beer cooler uh, that we've actually modified for use in uh, measuring science. What we have here is an actual instrument that we use to calibrate other instruments. It's really critical. Even though it looks crude, the science that we're trying to do with this is all the way through to being able to tell whether climate change is real, to being able to uh, improve weather forecasts. So what we do here at RAL Space is really focus on the instrumentation to measure sea surface temperature from space. This particular one was, I think, the first one that we ever flew. And it's essentially just the engineering model, which means that we know the size, the shape, and we can test it. What we're doing is we're measuring uh, a small part of the Earth from about 600 kilometers above it. So a lot of this is the optical telescope that allows you to magnify that image and bring it down to a single pixel. This has got the catchy title of ATSR, which just stands for the Long Track Scanning Radiometer. And all that means is it's measuring a path through the Earth's atmosphere looking at the sea. Now this one's long dead and gone, but we've had three since all of them continuing measuring sea surface temperatures over a long span of time. The last couple of weeks, we've lost the third generation instrument. And what that means is that we now have no more instruments measuring sea surface temperature. We've broken our long chain of data that we've had. Luckily, we've already planned the fourth, the next generation of satellites. And this is gonna be the most accurate thermometer that we've ever flown before. Three weeks ago, we had that fourth generation sea surface temperature instrument being tested in this big chamber here. And what this chamber does is recreate the thermal environments and what the satellite would experience while orbiting Earth. It's called another classic uh, name, SLSTR, which stands for the Sea Land Surface Temperature Radiometer. Currently, after being in the chamber and having been tested, it's now being shipped back to Europe, where it's going to be integrated on a satellite. Once the actual instrument's launched into space, we haven't really got a clear handle on what that instrument's measuring. So the initial temperature that it measures, we're pretty sure of, but from that point on, the essential drifts that you get, the differences, the changes in temperature, you would expect with any mechanical object occur while in space. But because it's so far away, because it's 600 kilometers, there's no chance for us to get there and retest it in the same conditions that we have in the lab. So what we've got is a sensor that measures in exactly the same way as the satellite is, is measuring. A smaller version, but we then strap that to the side of a ship. And the ship that we've put it on is the Queen Mary 2. Now the Queen Mary 2 is sailing around the globe, what that means is that every point that it's measuring of the sea surface temperature, we can then cross calibrate to when the satellite flies overhead. So we've had to go and put the instrument on board the Queen Mary 2, and it's, it's a laborious task, you know, it's a beautiful ship, and the food's excellent, but you know, someone's got to do it. And that's calibrating the instrument that we're flying on our satellite. But of course, we have to calibrate that instrument on board the Queen Mary 2 too. And this is where this beer cooler comes in. We've turned it into a very stable thermal environment, which means that we can modify the temperature in there. We can know the temperature in this environment really well. The wires that you can see are just linking thermometers along here, in which we create a thermal environment for this metal encasing. And the water, essentially, we put a large scale water bath, then immerses this metal. We bring our instrument back into our labs and we put it in front of this uh, thermally stable black environment. And so the light that the instrument is measuring comes directly from the corner tip. But essentially this whole copper environment is really thermally cooled by the water and it's really uniformly cooled. So that means that when our instrument's actually looking at the black tip of this area here. So the instrument points in here, does it? Just like you're doing at the moment, looking directly down to this tip, the, the temperature of this tip is really uniformly controlled by the water within this bath. So then we know exactly what our instrument is measuring. Then we put that onto the Queen Mary 2. Then we can measure and calibrate the satellites. The differences in temperature that our satellites measure are critical to determining whether it's going to rain where you are or whether it's not going to rain. Because those errors in your measurements, when they're put into the weather forecast models that the Met Office runs, propagate out over a series of time. Right? So 
after one, two, three days, if you've changed that temperature, if that temperature is not accurate, then at the back end downstream, you're going to have variations in what the weather's actually going to do. So it's really critical for weather forecasting. It's also really important for underpinning climate change. So if you imagine just a small error in your initial temperature going to propagate into a large error further on. What we're trying to do is get our measurements to about 0.2 degrees centigrade from space, from 600 kilometers away. So that's the equivalent of me looking at something in Edinburgh and being able to tell it whether it's uh, one degree or 1.2 degrees in temperature.